All right, so now it's time for the glue up. So I did two coats of tried and true original oil on this, and I just put the second coat on this morning, let it cure for a little while, wiped off any excess oil, then let it cure for a little while longer, and now I'm gonna do the glue up. So that's this is what I found is probably the best way to do glue ups with the least amount of risk, because if you don't pre-finish before you do a glue up, any areas where you have glue squeeze out that's hard to clean up, you're gonna get glue stains, which don't take the oil as nicely, and just generally look bad. It's, especially in a piece like this, where we have all those different depths to it, that can be really problematic, because you can end up not getting all the nice coloring in those different depths, because you'll get glue stains. So I've gone through, I pre-finished everything, the oil is still, to the touch, it still feels slightly oily. So it's not enough that these pieces are gonna be slipping out of my hand, but it's enough that the glue will really not stick to these. And so what I'm gonna do on this is I'm not going to wipe it off. I'm not gonna do anything to prevent the squeeze out. And so then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wait till tomorrow when it's all fully cured up and I'm gonna go in with a nice sharp chisel and just slice it away because the glue is not gonna to stick to any of these surfaces. You are gonna see it bubble out and bulge out, but it's not gonna actually stick to the surface. And if it does, we can, it's much easier to just slice away that hardened glue than it is to try and clean up an area where I've tried to wipe it off. Because even on the maple dresser where I tried really hard to do that properly, there were still a couple small areas where I had some glue staining, where, even where areas where I wiped off. So I'm not gonna do that on this one. I'm just going to let it dry, fully cure off, and then I'm just gonna cut it off with a chisel because that's where I've had the most success in the past. And so for this glue up, I'm gonna be using Type On 3 just to give myself the most working time possible. And because I just like Type On 3, it's the best one I've found so far. So the glue up is done, it's the next day, everything is fully dried up now, and this thing is solidly together. So overall the glue up went really well. As you can see, or well as you guys saw, I didn't have to use any clamps to actually pull this thing together. I did use clamps in a couple spots because I had the end grain starting to split out on a couple of the top areas, just because the draw boring wasn't working very well, but that all came together and I was able to repair those little cracks before they became anything serious enough to worry about. So everything is now solid together and it's all just fine. We did have issues in a couple spots where the dowels just didn't work out very well. Uh, one is sadly right on our front face here, which is gonna be really annoying, but it's not a hard fix. Because all you have to do if you have a drawboard dowel that doesn't fit it or doesn't work out, you know, you can't actually get it through the hole, is you just go back in afterwards and just drill it out. Again, it sucks that it happened, but it's also not that big of a deal. And so being completely honest, 316's dowels don't really work very well for draw boring. Uh, I've done it a couple times before, and it is, I've had the same results before too, where it works, but it does. It's, I wouldn't recommend it in a lot of projects because it can be quite challenging. For something like this, if you just put, if you put everything under clamping force, then drilled your holes into it, or you just did the glue up with clamps on it, then just drilled your holes in, you would be just fine. You know, you don't need to do the draw boring. It's just kind of an extra step that can create a little bit of nightmares like I've got down here now. And so the other thing I'll say about the glue up is applying finish, a fresh coat of finish the same day that you do the glue up is really, really helpful because I put a fresh coat of finish on this yesterday morning, then I let it cure for an hour and then I wiped it off, the excess off because that's what you do with you know natural oil finishes. Then I did the glue up two hours after that to make sure that the finish had started to slightly cure up.
So now that we've got the whole frame together, we've got the nice chamfer running around all of our outside edges so we don't have any sharp corners here, we can now go in and install of our hinges. So these are the hinges that literally made the whole project come together. I was browsing on Horton Brass's website and came across their hand forged iron and I fell in love with these instantly. And so these are hand forged hinges, I'm pretty sure they're made in Texas somewhere, uh, but you can buy them from Horton Brass's and they are absolutely beautiful. They are very smooth, I was, very, I was quite surprised by that given the fact that they're hand forged. They are a very smooth hinge, so I'm really excited to use them on this project and they're just kind of all around a very exciting and interesting thing. Because again, most importantly, they're hand forged. So just like everything else here, they're handmade by someone, not just mass produced. And so what we need to do first is make sure this L-shaped area is sitting flat on the trunk frame. So we're gonna start with the top section because we wanna make sure that we start there so then we can get an accurate depth when we're marking on the inside. And so on the top, we're gonna to be going down the full eighth of an inch. These are about, just about an eighth of an inch thick. So we're just gonna keep working until we fully inset the top area here. Now this area on the inside is not perfectly flat and I don't really need it to be. I just wanna make sure that it's inset enough that it sits nice and you know, mostly flat. And so then on the inside of the trunk, we're only gonna be removing about a sixteenth of an inch just to clear up the difference between the inside of our top stretcher and the surface of our divider. 